uh, 30 seconds or a minute more just to allow some more people into the room and then we'll kick off for this afternoon's threat series. So just hold fire for two seconds. Brilliant. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us this afternoon. My name is Luke Kinn and I'm the head of security alliances at Bytes and welcome to the last session of day two for our cyber threat series. Over the course of the three days, you would have heard from some industry experts as we take a deep dive into the ever-changing threat landscape, current trends, and more importantly, knowledge share on best practice on how to optimize your cyber posture. For this session, we're focusing on network and cloud, and we are joined by Richard and Scott from Sophos. But before we just go into the actual session, just going to go through some quick housekeeping rules. Uh, um, so please remain muted for the session. Um, if you do have any questions, though, please put them in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them right at the end. Um, so, yeah, please be interactive. Any questions you have, fire them away. Uh, the session is being recorded. So you'll get an email tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning with the recording. And if you want to pass it on to your peers, then please do so. Um, as mentioned, the session will be interactive. There'll be two polls popping up throughout the sessions. Um, so please kind of put your answers in there and it help us to tailor the Q&A at the end as well. So as mentioned, we're delighted to have Richard and Scott here joining us from Sophos, who are our key partner of Bytes. Um, some of the discussion points we can expect from today are the threat landscape, uh, the attackers shift to cloud vulnerabilities and how to, how to kind of prevent those, some threat intelligence stats, uh, security best practices and how Sophos can support with those with managed services. And to tailor that, um, I touch on a new Sophos offering from AWS Marketplace, which Scott will go into. Um, so hopefully looking forward to today's sessions. As mentioned, please pop your questions in the Q&A box. Um, so without further ado, I hand over to Richard. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, me... Do a quick slide swap over. There we go. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And, and thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for for taking the time and, and, and letting us be here really to, to tell you a little bit more about what Sophos, what we're doing in, um, in regards to security in the public cloud. So through the session, uh, you're gonna be hearing from Scott Barlow, our Vice President of Global MSP and Cloud Alliances, and myself, uh, Richard Beckett. I head up the, the cloud uh, product marketing team here at Sophos. So to kick things off, I'm going to head straight uh, hand straight over to Scott, who's going to take you through just around setting the scene around Sophos and what we'll be discussing today. Thanks, Rich. And you know, today we're going to be covering three key topics. First, we'll examine the cybersecurity threat landscape as it relates to cloud and the shifting tactics of attackers. Second, we'll take a closer look at how Sophos is helping customers approach cybersecurity in the cloud and embracing and extending the cloud provider tools that are out there to secure workloads, apps, data, et cetera, in hybrid environments. And then lastly, but most importantly, we'll uh, talk a little bit about the combination of the best protection managed from a single um, pane of glass wrapped with 24 by seven monitoring and response um, and why it's attractive to organizations. We call that managed threat response. For those of you who are not familiar with Sophos, um, we are a next generation cybersecurity company. We've been around for a little bit over 30 years and uh, headquartered in Abingdon, um, UK. And you know, we, we actually really, um, our mission is very simple. It's really designed to protect people and businesses from cybercrime. And we do that through a combination of powerful and intuitive products and services that protect um, effective and comprehensive cybersecurity for organizations of any size. Um, when we say comprehensive, we mean that we cover network, data, user and device protection. And we do that for both on-prem networks, we do it for remote users, we do it for the cloud, of course, but then also any hybrid environment. 
And you know, if you look at the AWS offering that we launched and we'll talk about today, um, we've been working with AWS since uh, AWS Marketplace was launched. Um, and we're excited to talk more about that today and actually give you a, um, a little bit of a case study and testimonial um, from one of our customers that are actually leveraging the, what we call the MSSP bundle. So on the next slide, um, securing organizations under attack, you know, 70% of organizations suffer from public cloud security incidents in the last 12 months. We did a, um, a, a, an analysis, a survey. Um, it was the SOFOS State of Cloud Security um, Survey. And, you know, these types of attacks um, that we are defending organizations from every single day. And blocking these, you know, is obviously the highest priority for any organization. But for teams faced with the range of responsibilities, including security, they often need a blend of intuitive, scalable tools and services to ensure um, application uptime, data security for their customers, um, and you know, so forth. So this is a really important statistic. Um, a lot of organizations think that as they migrate into the public cloud, everything is secure. And this is where you get into the shared responsibility model where the public cloud vendor will secure the backend infrastructure. And then it is your responsibility to secure um, what is actually stored in the public cloud. And when we look at the um, attacker shift to cloud vulnerabilities, um, we see a lot of these attackers writing scripts to identify misconfigurations and vulnerabilities like RDP is open or SSH is exposed. Um, you might have data storage in a public mode or some overprivileged identity and access management roles. And this is how quickly the attackers are identifying those holes within the public cloud environment. And this is in seconds, 14 seconds in California, four seconds in Ohio. It is pretty scary. But when you look at the number of attacks due to misconfiguration, our survey stated 66%. If you look at Gardner, Gardner last year, I think it was 96%. This year it's 99%. So all of, or the majority of the misconfigurations or the attacks are due to misconfigurations um, within the public cloud. And the offering that we actually put together is designed to help you thwart all of those attacks um, and to secure the public cloud environment, as well as your on-prem network and your on-prem um, endpoints as well. And you know, this next slide illustrates the shift um, to cloud by attackers um, with ransomware. 59% of attacks where data was successfully encrypted now includes data in the public cloud. And I think that's a very important statistic. Rogue actors locking up systems and data with ransomware has made customers um, even more nervous and you know, more conscious of data security. And if you look at the average ransom, that has actually increased to $170,000 last year. And then 35% of the data, even if you pay that ransom, has never been recovered. And so there is a lot of concern um, with public cloud security. And I think one of the SOFO strengths in ransomware protection um, is being able to intercept that behavior and roll back any changes to files to minimize the risk to business continuity. And it's really one of the key reasons why customers um, trust us to obviously protect the business. And you know, on the next slide, if you look at the attacker shift to software development pipelines, we've seen a variety of different um, threats that are out there. Um, we all heard about the SolarWinds attack where um, malicious code was injected into their software. That was done by APT29 Group. And then you look at the Exchange Zero Day um, from Hafnium. And then most recently is the Kaseya with Revel. Um, and, you know, the attack timeline has went, has gone from, you know, months and years from, to days and weeks to minutes. And, you know, this evolution, um, you know, a lot of these organizations are now becoming software companies and, and security, I think, needs to evolve in parallel. Um, and so, Rich, maybe I'll kick it over to you to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the services that we're offering um, as Sophos Hybrid Cloud Security. 
Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, so yeah, what, what we'll do now, let's um, just take a little a closer look, if you like, at how Sophos, how we're helping customers, how we're helping, I think importantly, their approaches to cybersecurity, not just around the, the products and the services that we can uh, that we can sell to, to organizations. So I think that's really important. So our focus is really on, on evolving security as fast or, or faster than those cyber attacks that Scott just mentioned a moment ago, really to to provide the, the protection, the, the managed services that you not only need in your cloud strategy today, but where you might be in 12, 24 months time as you start to adopt more cloud native products and, and services from the cloud providers themselves. I think that's important because you really need to be looking ahead of where you are now so that vendor can support you for the long term. Now, you can see that, that broad portfolio in action here. So, we cover a number of different use cases that you can see there on the screen. But if I boil that down, like essentially through our products, we can help you connect uh, users easily and securely, whether that's to on-prem networks or to um, cloud consoles and cloud applications and services. We can provide protection on endpoints, mobile devices and cloud workloads. Endpoint might be the, the place that you know us all best at the moment, I would imagine. And we can also enable you to shift left of attackers. So there's the, the, that evolution that Scott just spoke to a moment ago, how organizations are shifting to, or, or attackers are shifting to um, attack software development pipelines. We can enable you there to shift left of attackers by integrating, <clears throat> excuse me, with cloud native technologies, things like infrastructure as code and templates that you might be using to to automate the build out of new infrastructure or containers that you might be using to uh, um, uh, to to refactor and modernize your applications that you might be moving all things that are going to help you enable and, and build out a, a devsecops function within your organization now that the intelligence from those products all feeds into this the the sophos um adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem and this is the whole point of this system is to capture much more of your cloud environment than ever before it's all about creating these threat hunting connections across your hybrid cloud environment whether that's on-prem um public cloud private cloud wherever you are to enable stronger security there so what the system is doing it's leveraging automation through our products and human analysts as well. So in there, you've got AI-based prevention to, to stop the latest and the, um, the sort of never before seen threats. And you also have cross product detection and response in there as well to start to find the, the suspicious signals amongst the, the noise of your cloud environment. So it's all about there detecting the, the more sophisticated attacks that might take advantage of sort of your, your now dispersed but still very interconnected systems as you make that move into the cloud. So this whole cybersecurity ecosystem here is really geared to protecting your systems, your data, wherever it might exist or wherever you've moved it from and to. But Scott mentioned the um, uh, the, the customer story that we'll walk through. And, and I'll, I'll walk through it here as kind of an aggregate of a lot of different customer conversations that we've been having. Because the partnership that many of our customers have with Sophos often isn't primarily focused on our product capabilities. What it's really focused on, I think, is, is how we distinguish ourselves in, in helping their teams and hopefully your teams to realize your cybersecurity strategies in the first place. And here, you know, as I mentioned, based on a lot of co customer conversations that we've been having, I've tried to distill down their approaches down into this pretty straightforward strategy or, or approach that, that any business would, would do well to follow when, uh, when migrating or, or optimizing applications in the cloud. Now, the first step of that is around designing your environments to adhere to best practice standards that have been established by your cloud provider, whether you're using AWS or Azure, or Google Cloud, whoever you might be using. But importantly, to ensure you have the tools in place to verify that 
those security checklists are maintained and that someone knows where you sit in regards to that checklist and that any deviations that might occur so a change in configuration for instance a, a change in your root table for instance on your firewall those sort of deviations are captured in real time so you can do something about it and stop them becoming a vulnerability proactively secondly is to look beyond vendor technology to threat intelligence kind of the core kind of what scale does your does your provider um, operate at how frequently are updates made available to things like host agents for instance on your server workloads or how lightweight is the agent um, running on those hosts to reduce our uh, resource consumptions for instance and then thirdly you know it's all about then looking for ways to not necessarily add skills without headcount it's more about increasing the efficiency of your teams when it comes to security through managed security services so this is where we can help you to stay current on security events and we can provide proactive managed detection investigation and remediation of threats by a very specialist team of threat hunters so we focus on this route um really because it allows you to embrace and extend your cloud provider services ultimately because you know services like amazon guard duty or azure sentinel we're very aware and understand that you move to the cloud you will adopt the the services by that cloud provider so then it really becomes a case of how can we start to embrace them prioritize those alert feeds help you fix issues faster more proactively and bridge any skill gaps that you might have in place and this is kind of where a lot of organizations that we speak to um, start with us now um, before i break down these three pillars in just a little bit more detail i will now pause i will stop talking for a second and we'll uh, we'll flash up a quick poll question and i'll give you uh Give you a few moments just to answer that one. Okay, fantastic. I'll leave that there for a minute while I continue, or if I can. I think that poll actually freezes the screen. Give you just a few minutes more, a few seconds more. No one's on the cocktails. That's, that's disappointing. There we are. Not Friday yet. Wonderful. I will end that poll and then we can carry on with the session. So what we'll now do, let's um, just expand on, on the first point I mentioned a moment ago. So it's all around designing your cloud environments to adhere to best practice standards. I'm just going to get rid of that. To, to adhere to best practice standards established by, you know, whether that be AWS, Azure, Google, whoever you're aligned with there in the cloud. So this is really step one in establishing kind of a, the, the, the robust, if you like, security foundation that you can then scale on once you've got those best practices in hand. And these could include um, facets of your cloud um, structure like organization and account structures it could be controlling access within your environments it might be locking down root accounts regular backups and so on there's obviously a lot to do in terms of maintaining best practice in the cloud now your the uh, the shared responsibility model that scott mentioned before can help you with that and bytes can also help you with that the value sophos really brings into this whole equation is with our cloud security posture management service and this is a, a service called cloud optics or a product called cloud optics should i say and what it does is allow you to continuously monitor those environments and point out where exceptions um, might exist or where you where changes different configurations have been made within your environment well having a tool in there that learns the behavior of your cloud environment can identify anomalies unusual behavior aka it might be an attacker making those changes within your environment we can learn and alert you to that so for our customers the cloud optics power is really in identifying those unusual changes within your environment without just telling your teams the same thing over and over again importantly here it is 
acting as a filter on top of, of key services, things like Amazon Guard Duty or Azure Sentinel, for instance, to prioritize and give you a very clear traffic light signal, if you like, on the, uh, the, the severity of the issues within your, uh, your own cloud environment. And as a result there, you can then start to tackle the, the low hanging fruit or maybe the, the obvious matters, the kind of quick wins that you could be making from a, a security posture point of view. Now, oh, let's, I was just throwing that out. There we are. Brilliant. So now we can just, what I'll do now, I'm just going to break down cloud optics in just a little bit more detail so you can see exactly kind of what's involved here. Now you can quickly see on the right hand side of the screen already, you've got a range of cloud provider services or, or data feeds that we're ingesting in cloud optics. We're combining those data feeds, we're providing it in a single view across multi-cloud environments, whether you're in AWS, Azure, Google. Um, and these services, these are just a core sample, probably the most um, commonly known services that you might be using from those cloud providers today, but the list is a lot longer than this. Now, at its core, what Optics is then doing is risk profiling the security, compliance, and cloud spend alerts from these services, as well as like your VPC flow logs, for instance, your network security groups, and providing contextual alerts that can group affected resources together under common issues, so you can reduce your alert total, but also give you then detailed remediation steps to help bridge any skill gaps that you might have within your organization. And even if you don't, if you have those skills in place, give you very clear guidance on how to fix those issues even faster without Googling or looking up uh, documentation from your cloud provider, for instance. Now, uh, the service also, I'll switch up for some different screenshots from the console here. So the service also provides complete visibility of an organization's cloud assets. So in there, you've got accurate on-demand um, inventories of everything you have running from your host through to your IAM roles, your containers, your storage services, and so on. But you can also generate these on-demand topology visualizations as well. So this is just going to save you hours, if not days of time, particularly maybe in the run-up to a, a, com a, a compliance audit, for instance. Now, what I'm not showing in um, here specifically, but you can see these lines coming down the screen from our internet gateway at the top. What we can also do here is to um, uh, analyze your um, network security groups within your cloud environment and also identify not only where the traffic is flowing, as you see where those lines are today, but also where traffic might flow, as in where you have a vulnerability or a customer database that might be left open with public access from the internet, for instance. So really helping you proactively prevent a lot of these issues in the first place. Now, um, that uh, we're also proactively analyzing your environments all the time to identify and risk profile any alerts coming through your cloud environment. So that might be those misconfigurations that Scott mentioned before, things like unrestricted access from the internet, open ports, unencrypted data, for instance, anything that could create a potential breach point. And look at user access anomalies on top of that to your cloud provider management consoles, whether that be the console itself or to the CLI or APIs even, sort of pathways for attackers. And we can open this all up to look at, help you identify overprivileged IAM roles as well. So um, access roles, whether they be human or non-human from your actual services that may have too many privileges and could be exploited easily by attackers. So it's all about taking all that intelligence in. And as you can see here on the screenshot, giving you then a very clear traffic light at the top to say, focus here first. This is where you can make the most sort of ground in your cloud um, uh, proactive uh, uh, cloud security posture. And then lastly, Cloud Optics is doing all of this from the development cycle through to the ongoing security of live cloud services as well. So it's ensuring security misconfigurations are never released into a cloud environment, uh, into a live production environment where an attacker could compromise those systems in the first place. So this is all about being able to shift left of attackers and prevent issues in the first place. Now, 
Looking beyond uh, technology for a minute, we're going to spend some time on threat intelligence. This was another one of those key items that I mentioned earlier. Um, because as with our customers and, and you, I'm sure, everyone requires the best protection, best monitoring, but not to the detriment of your systems in the first place. So a key recommendation from those customers that we spoke to and, and that we would make is to regularly apply updates, patches as often as possible. You know, don't take additional risk by not patching um, because you don't want to go briefly offline. That kind of thing needs discipline, but was highly recommended from a lot of the customers and those that are really sort of gaining ground in their security strategy. So what this means from our side is implementing as well workload anti-malware solutions that are lightweight, that are um, kept updated with the latest threats and have AI in there to recognize never before seen threats. So they don't have to carry all of that, that kind of um, resource consumption on their own. They can rely on the AI to, to, to handle the predictive element. And this is just going to help you eliminate uh, any possible disruptions for continuous operations, streamline your company resources through the, the weight on those instances in the first place. And at Sophos, you know, we take this even a step further to include container image scanning as well. So not just looking at the hosts, but looking at the containers to identify vulnerabilities present in those container images used by development teams that could be exploited later on in attacks. Now, from a, a, a product portfolio point of view, uh, Sophos Cloud workload and endpoint protection is available from Sophos Intercept X for server and Intercept X for endpoint to align to this threat intelligence um, uh, stream. You know, advanced threats just as prevalent in the cloud as on prem. You know, so that need for antivirus protection from malware exploits um, just as crucial in the cloud as they are on prem. And Intercept X with XDR allows you to provide that automated advanced threat protection, if you see what I mean, across whether it be endpoints, your virtual desktop environments, your cloud server instances. So all helping you keep users, applications and data safe from the latest threats. And something um, sort of not a lot of uh, new people to Sophos know is that the workload protection um, agents from Sophos are actually completely transferable. So if you have servers on-prem today, you move those to the cloud, you can move your licenses with you, but you maintain the same console, the same management experience and the same protection. So you don't need to reskill your own teams as you start to make that migration across to the cloud. Now, protecting environments from known and emerging network threats, another obviously key area of where we pour our threat intelligence into. And this is where we then have a Sophos Firewall as well. So Sophos Firewall, this is an all-in-one solution. This is available um, as a HA configuration as well, high availability. And that all-in-one solution is, is really there to align to that whole idea of intuitive kind of simple to manage security solutions. So it's helping you um, reduce the, the time in deploying multiple network security products. You've got IPS, ATP, uh, URL filtering, uh, WAF to protect those web-facing applications all in, uh, in one product that you can deploy at the same time. And like all the products we've spoken about already, this is all available from a single console, um, just so you can increase team efficiencies internally, you can hopefully as well start to reduce costs as well involved in the, in the management and upkeep of these services by your own teams. Now, what connects the dots um, between the, the, if you like, between the Sophos portfolio is Sophos managed security services. And you know, as, as a recent customer put it, as we started to, to work through them with their um, journey to the cloud, bad guys, are just you're, they're going to work 24-7. They are going to attack at the most inconvenient times. But for a lot of teams, you know, whether your team is large or small, it's just not realistic option uh, a lot of the time to keep those teams monitoring security around the clock. And that is exactly where Sophos Managed Threat Response Service can come into play. So this team 
provide around the clock security monitoring of your hybrid environment. So again, if that's on-prem, private, public cloud, wherever you are storing your data, running your workloads from. And that team of human analysts start to receive telemetry from all the Sophos technologies we've seen today, whether that be CSPM with optics, whether that be workload protection, endpoint protection, firewalls, as well as the intelligence from the AWS and the Azure services uh, that you might be running. So it's really around creating as many sensors across your environment as we can to detect those weak signals, those suspicious signals of, of, of a threat and attacker behavior, ensure they're detected. And you can work with this team however you want. And you can change this model as uh, sort of as you increase the, the amount that you work with Sophos. So you can instruct this, this MTR team to proactively act when they see threats or suspicious signals within your environment. Or you can have that team uh, uh, preemptively reach out to you and advise you what they found, what they've discovered, and what their recommended next steps are. And if you want them to then take that action or work with them to do that, if you want them to have access into your environment, for instance. And we just find with a lot of moving parts within your cloud environment, within your cloud architecture, this support is just hugely valuable for a lot of organizations, really helps their team, as I say, to just get more efficient to teams can focus on software development, maintaining products, patching, etc. And you can rely on this time any time of the day or night to respond to threats. So really important for a lot of customers now. And I suppose just to, to finish to round that section off, I thought I'd drop this quote in here from, from Dinesh. This is um, uh, Director of Software Engineering at one of our customers. You know, Sophos is here 24 7 ultimately, so your team doesn't have to be. We can work with you anywhere you, you need us to or want us to. You know, whether that incident is happening at 3 a.m., whether it is happening over holidays at Christmas our global team is always there and they hand off as that day continues around the sun to continue that level of support that you need that level of continuity that you need to deal with advanced threats today okay and on that note i will pause for another uh, quick poll question before we move on to the next section so you should be seeing that pop up on your screen any moment There we go. Wonderful. I'll give you a few more minutes, a few more seconds just to, to answer that one. We've got a bit creative with the poll questions today, just to liven it up on an afternoon. So Everyone's quickly Googling pictures of dogs so they don't put themselves in the wrong category. must say i was thinking more pit bulls to be perfectly honest so that's um that's good to know we need to work for more companies like that there we are wonderful so while you keep on answering that one i will um start to kind of enter the, the closing phases of the session so we've spoken a lot about um monitoring their creating quite a, a potential resource or skills challenge for organizations um the same can be said for managing, deploying, configuring cloud security itself. And this is why we actually recently launched a new managed security service package. Um, originally with AWS, we launched this, but this can be, um, we can provide this on both AWS and Azure, wherever your, your environment is. Um, and I should mention Bytes are experts in providing this, uh, the service that backs up this package as well. And this is really designed to really take some of the weight, if you like, off of cloud security off your shoulders, ultimately. So if I break down this package, just kind of step by step, it, it really takes the design to take the guesswork out of, of security technology decisions in the cloud. 
what you've got here, that top row, you have a single package. And what we've done there is fusing automated protection across cloud workloads, virtual networks, endpoints. And we've also wrapped that in the Sophos 24 7 managed threat response service, all to help you secure data, proactively prevent vulnerabilities in the first place, block advanced threats. And uh, those um, technologies and services have really been chosen because they span the six key security domains that we work with a lot with the cloud providers, those of vulnerability management, cloud security best practices and compliance, uh, host and endpoint security, threat detection and response, as well as network security and associated application security as well. So what you get here is not just the technology, you get a dedicated team of security experts from our MTR service that I've just touched on a moment ago. They're going to be there continuously monitoring cloud environments, responding to security events or alerting you to them and working with you on them, however you want to work with them. But you're also going to get a very flexible deployment um, approach here. It's going to allow protection to be um, managed in-house by your own team. If you've you know, got the, the skills, the resources, the time to manage those products yourself, or you can enlist bytes and they can ensure correct deployment configuration, just give you a total peace of mind, if you like, that that, that technology is in place, configured properly and, 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 and working to, to protect your business in the best way possible. Now, from a, a cloud platform perspective, um, it also helps you just achieve much um, greater value from key cloud provider services as security findings, as you can see there on the bottom, from key services like uh, Guard Duty and Sentinel, for instance, they are analyzed by the products, they are risk assessed, they are prioritized to you, as we saw in Cloud Optics earlier. So nothing is ever lost. So whether you are picking up those alerts, whether bytes are picking up those alerts for you, everyone knows where to focus attention and ensures you don't switch these services off if they become too noisy, for instance, within your environment, you make the most of that telemetry just to improve your, your response. There we are. Now, I also promised you a why this is important right at the start of our session. Uh, well, the, the package here helps you identify three kind of big important areas within your, within your cloud strategy, within your cloud security strategy. The first one is around resources. You know, a lot of teams, as we mentioned, whether it's large, small, it's not realistic to keep them monitoring security around the clock. So that's where the Sophos MTR team can come in, create more efficiencies within your organization, add all that skill into your team without needing to recruit sort of uh, new people or find them in the first place. And those skills are very hard to find as we know ourselves from building that team out. Secondly, is all about skills or more about, should I say, bridging skill gaps or helping you um, uh, um, uh, focus within your organization. So most cloud security incidents, as, um, as Scott mentioned at the start, can be prevented with proper configuration of your cloud environments um, and also a good understanding, solid understanding of the cloud provider's own shared responsibility model. So. The Sophos package there just takes all the guesswork out. It layers the correct security tools on top of AWS or Azure, so you can kind of extend, um, embrace and extend the, those existing services and cut through the alert noise that might be generated by your environment. Um, so you can immediately identify the most, the highest priority risks and alerts that your team should focus on or that Byte should focus on. So we can you know, provide you with guided remediation just to fix those issues as quickly as possible. So it's all about alerting you to the right areas, giving you guided um, remediation, next steps on how to fix those issues so you can bridge any skill gaps. And then um, the third is around IT budgets themselves, which we don't often sort of talk about all the time, but because the package here is available through AWS Marketplace, and if you're an existing AWS um, customer from an infrastructure structure point of view, you can, that means you can combine cloud security and cloud infrastructure in one invoice. So you can just achieve you know, greater executive alignment internally across your security and your infrastructure teams. 
But what it also means is that Sophos purchases in AWS Marketplace can also help your IT budgets go further, which is fantastic news. And the reason for that is if you have a consumption commitment in place with AWS, Sophos uh, um, security purchases through Marketplace um, will count towards any of those contracted consumption commitments in place with AWS. So you can reach those commitments sooner. And Bytes can help you. They can facilitate that whole um, uh, process through Marketplace. So they can push you offers, you can accept them, etc. And you keep it all nicely contained with, with Bytes, which is fantastic. It's a real kind of huge step forward in terms of um, purchasing through marketplaces just to make them more accessible, more flexible for your own teams internally. So lots of fantastic benefits. I think that one really is the sort of cherry on the top um, because everyone wants budgets to obviously go further nowadays more than ever. So a lot of fantastic benefits on offer. Now, um, before um, we break for next steps, before I hand over to Luke, um, it's just your chance to just tell us any areas that you wish we might have covered more today? Maybe we can cover those in the Q&A or we can pick those up with you later, take you through demos, for instance. Just uh, so we'll flash that quick poll, not sorry, not so much a poll, more of a free text box that you can tell us anything you wish we'd had spent a bit more time on today. And with that, I will come off share and I'll start to hand back over to Luke while you're answering that one. And we can, uh, we can go into next steps. Great, thank you, Richard and Scott. Um, so as Richard said, if you have any comments or questions, uh, we do have a couple in the chat box, then feel free to, to pop them in there. Um, I'm just gonna go over some, uh, I guess a free assessment that we can we can offer. Uh, it's actually utilizing Sophos Optics, which Richard went through. Um, so whilst I'll do that, please, please fire away your questions and then we'll get to them after that. Um, so the, the cloud, the Bytes of Cloud Security Snapshot is effectively a 30-day a complete visibility of your cloud infrastructure. So that can be Azure, AWS, Google. Um, it's, it's quick to set up, as it, as it says on the screen, less than an hour. Um, and we can go across multi-cloud. Um, and across those 30 days, we'll give you a complete view of all of your assets, um, your security groups, and we'll tell you if they're in and out, of, in or out of compliance, and we can drill down into the actual compliance frameworks that you would like to focus on, whether that is ISO, PCI, GDPR, um, and we can customize some of reporting for that as well. So um, we can customize reporting for senior execs, yourselves, um, and um, from there we can identify some security risks and work with you to hopefully mitigate those risks um, but also give you some expertise on on how to manage a product like Sophos Optics moving forward. Um, as well as that we have our cloud teams so the engineers that work across AWS and Azure to help you understand the configuration of, of those platforms as well. So it's a complete package um, it's, as I said, it is a snapshot for 30 days, but it does give you some great visibility of your cloud assets. Um, so if you are interested, um, please uh, reach out to your account manager or, or myself, uh, and we can kind of talk you through the detail of that. So on to the questions. So give me a second whilst I fire up the chat box. Okay. Um, so we are running a lot of containers on Azure. Um, what specifically do Sophos offer for protection here? Okay, yeah, I can take that one. So um, two areas that we cover there. So first is with the, the Cloud Optics product, we offer um, uh, container vulnerability scanning. So particularly there, we're looking for OS vulnerabilities within the uh, the actual container images um, in the first place. Um, so what this will, will do, we'll be able to prioritize, we basically tell you these are the, we scan the registries that you might be running. So we'll be looking at, um, for Azure, it'd be um, ACR, so Azure Container Registry. We've also got Amazon Container Registry and um, Docker Hub registries. So you'd attach your, your registry, we'll scan those images within that registry for any vulnerabilities. And 
um, identify in the console sort of the severity, if you like, of those of those vulnerabilities. That will go a little further soon to actually allow you to place some guardrails, if you like, around your, your container deployments to say a, an image can't actually make its way into my environment without passing a certain uh, threshold or doesn't contain any vulnerabilities, for instance. So you can kind of better, um, yeah, apply guardrails around your container usage strategy from that point of view. Um, this is now recently um, also, our container strategy has now moved on from a product point of view. So we recently made a, a recent acquisition, which is going to allow us to also um, provide uh, runtime um, container protection as well um, from, from advanced threats. So that's a really kind of nice movement forward um, in that story. So both vulnerabilities of the images themselves and runtime protection of those containers. Um, and then that will span us then across container workloads, Linux workloads, and, and Windows work workloads as well. So you have a pretty, uh, you have a, a really sort of strong strategy from that point of view. And all of that will start to feed in um, by early next year into our XDR product and our, our MTR product that I've mentioned before to give you those sensors across your, your, your container footprint as well. Great, thank you, good question. Um, uh, more of a broad question, but what would be your number one recommendation for cloud strategy? Yes, uh, it is. Um, it, it, it reminds me of, as we were having a really interesting conversation re recently with one of the, the cloud providers themselves, and they mentioned that a lot of customers may actually find themselves leading, leaving a cloud security vendor if you like um within two years of adopting them because they're what they what the customer might be running today for instance hosts or you might have just lifted and shifted your server workloads into the cloud you might not be running containers for instance take the recent with the previous question as an example so you might not need containers right now and a lot of organizations end up shopping for what they need today and not shopping for what they need in 12 24 months time and so from the back of that conversation, the real thing that kind of resonated with me is sort of map out that strategy of where you will be in that timeline, in that sort of sort of medium to, to long-term timeline, what you need to get you there, and then align yourself or ask the difficult questions of those vendors to say, what is your strategy for uh, X deployment or X application or X service? And make sure that they've got the vision to, to move with you. Um, I think Scott and I are lucky enough to to work with an organization that is is building that portfolio out all the time, whether that be organically or, or through acquisition. Um, as we now kind of in our stage now move on to DevSecOps a lot more, we're looking at we just acquired a new um, company that allow you to build out um, DevSecOps pipelines to automate a lot of your security controls. So those are the sort of things I think you need to be thinking of. Um, in your your cloud strategy not just what you need today what you need tomorrow what you need in two years time and ask the ask the difficult questions or ask the vendor to create the question for, you know to uh to, to tell you what you might need and see where the gaps are in that story perfect thank you um so i mean that's that's all the time we have for questions today but as mentioned before if you do have any other questions uh, please feel free to to email us directly, and we can we can respond to those. Um, right at the start, uh, sorry, right at the start, I mentioned you will get a recording, so that will be should be in the inbox by tomorrow. Um, so please feel free to to pass that on and view again. And tomorrow is the last day of our threat series, uh, where we'll be focusing on Microsoft. Um, so hopefully you can join us for one of those sessions. But thank you, Richard and Scott, for today. Great content. Really appreciate your time, um, and thanks for everyone for joining us. And have a good, good evening. Thanks a lot. Bye.